There you go. That all you needed? Yep, that's it. All right, now get out. Come on, stupid thing. All the stupid things not working, and I tried everything. Clean the print head, I put new ink cartridges in it, peed in the paper tray, and nothing's working. All right, all right, get out of my way. Let me look at it. Whatever, Paul. Let me know if you get it fixed. You gotta be kidding me. Stupid thing, it's not even that old. I hate to do this, but I guess I'm gonna have to call tech support. Where's that number? Hello, thank you for calling. Ben Franklin Burners. If you know your party's extension, please dial now. Otherwise, wait on the line for more options. If you are complaining about ink pricing, press 1. No! If you would like to subscribe to our exciting new ink newsletter, press 2. If you are experiencing problems with your printer, press 975 now. You have chosen 975. Please stay on the line for a representative to speak to you. Your current wait time is 4 hours and 54 minutes. Nobody. There's nobody on the phone. And nobody. That wasn't tech support, was it? No, that was the wrong number. Okay, good. Did you fix the printer? No. No, I wasn't able to fix it. Well, why not? Your Terrell fixes all. I figured you could fix the thing. You know what? You're right, son. I am Terrell fixes all. Yeah, I should be able to fix this printer. Well, and yeah. you know what? I know just the tool that I can fix it with. Okay, Junior. It's time to fix the printer. Take that, Ben Franklin. Now go fly a kite. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Printer's all fixed. What is that, Pa? Is that blood? No, son. That's magenta. Oh, hello there. Pterodactyl here. And today's how-to video is going to be on this here crawler command engine that has what's called a DSAI ignition, which DSAI stands for Digital Spark Advanced Ignition. And they obviously had problems with this ignition because they replaced it with a kit that's now called an MDI ignition. And MDI stands for Mommy Daddy Ignition. Now, I don't know what MDI stands for. It probably stands for Magneto Discharge Ignition. But Mommy Daddy Ignition sounds better. So if you got one of these crawlers that's got that MD, that, not MD, that DSAI Ignition and you're having problems with it like this fella is where the spark is cutting in and out, you might want to buy one of these kits. They're about $100. And here's the bulletin on it. Read the bulletin. Covers all these different model engines and there's a couple different kits for different models. So you know what you can do? You can hit the pause, the pause. You can hit the pause button and read this. I'm having a hard time talking today. Hit the pause, read the bulletin. 
Okay. Now, every engine's gonna be a little different. You might have an air filter back there. On this here X mark, it's up on top. So, you know, some removal of this cover is gonna be easier on some engines than, than others. And then it's on the Courage motor too, certain model Courage. So first thing we're gonna do is take this off. We'll get this out of the way. Bend that. Take that out. We'll just move it. Then we're gonna take this bracket off. Two screws back here, 10 millimeter, and then these Phillips head screws up there, and then this bracket will come off. All right, now I'm gonna take the throttle and choke cable off. Might wanna mark the holes so you put it back in the same hole. Now we're gonna take this off, 10 millimeter. Now there's a spring and a washer under here. Take this off, spring in a washer, don't lose it. Put them in a safe place. Now you can lift this off and get this out of your way. Now let's take this screen off. This has got Torx number 25, 25T Torx bit. Take these out. Now if yours has got an oil cooler, you can just take the top screw out because that bottom one's hard to get at and just push this, bend this out of the way a little bit. You ain't going to hurt it. Let's disconnect the voltage regulator. Now you've got some 8 millimeter or 516 screws in the back. One here and one here. To get to this one, you got to take the one out that holds the dipstick tube. So you can kind of get that out of your way. There's a lot, a lot of stuff to take off this thing to get this cover off. I already pre-loosened them. There's another one over here. There's two in the front. Fuel pump. 10 millimeter. Use a swivel if you have to. Now on some of these crawlers, these screws in the front are also 8 millimeter or 5 16 but in this case these are 10. And in this thing here, in case you're wondering what that is, that's a lifting lug for lifting the engine out. You can hook something to here, and then over here is a lifting lug too. In case you're wondering what these are. These are lifting lugs. So you can hook a engine puller to it. Or just be a man and lift it out like a man. Hurt your back. Take those out. And you got two more on this side. But you have to take this breather off to get to the other two underneath here. And this breather is 5 sixteenths or 8 millimeter, same size. Oh, that's going to be hard to get at. I'm going to have to use a ratchet. There's a little plate behind here. And then go ahead and take the other two screws out that are behind here. 10 millimeter, take this screen off. It's nice having one of these battery powered tools. Makes it faster. 
lift these off. Now these little things come off with it and they got little spring washers under there. So make sure you don't lose them. In case you're wondering what this little metal tab is, that little metal tab is when that screen is spinning, that's supposed to clear the grass away from this screen. It's supposed to keep this screen clean. That's what that little metal tab does. Just in case you're wondering, hey Terrell, what's that little metal tab? Well, that's what it does. Get this out of the way. All right, got all the bolts out. So we can lift the cover off and expose the coil. This is that DSAI ignition. This is your kill wire. And this ignition requires 12 volts to feed it. Now this particular mower, he was complaining it was working, it wasn't working. It would work, sometimes it'd work all day, and then and it would die out and he couldn't get it started, and a couple hours later it would start up. So he took it somewhere else, and they replaced this fuse. They must have thought that was it. Because this is the fuse for the 12 volts to this. And they must have replaced it, and it must have worked for a while, and then it quit working again. But like I said, they obviously had a problem with it because they came up with a whole new kit. Now we're going to show you how to install that kit. Stay tuned. All right, here's the kit. Let's open it up, see what Crawler has given us. Oh, there's instructions. You know what you want to do with them, not read them. <laughs> Quite a bit of instructions here because it covers different engines. The command twin. Command twin with a DSAM, which is a Digital Spark Advanced Module. This is Digital Spark Advanced Ignition. And then it also the Courage Twin. So there's instructions, but we're going to do this one. We're covering the DSAI. Pretty simple kit. This is your new kill wire. These are some zip ties. And they give you a couple of connectors. Well, a connector. And that's in case you have a bullet connector. Uh, you might have to cut it off and add this connector. And then two coils, two new coils. Now, I read through the instructions, and nowhere in those instructions does it mention this wire, which is like a bleed-off wire. It's hooked into this. So you hook that to here when you go to put the new coils on. But if you read the instructions, they don't even mention this wire. They must have forgot about it. And then they give you a sticker. And this sticker is for if you have the command with the DSAM module. And the DSAM module is a square box that's mounted to the blower shroud. And then there's a hole in the blower shroud that the wires run through. And they tell you to take this sticker and put it over that hole. But since we don't have that, I got me a nice little crawler sticker I could stick on something. Alright, I'm going to pull the plug wires off. And then I'm going to pull these plugs off. The coils, the old coils. And they tell you to throw this stuff away. You know why? Because it's garbage. Throw it away. Don't try reselling it on eBay. Ripping somebody off with this junk. Garbage. Garbage. Now, they tell you to reinstall the coils with the flat side up. See how that's flat? Another thing, make sure these are clean. I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper and scuff them up a little bit because you want to get a good ground. So I'm going to scuff that up. 
They don't tell you that in the instructions either. Give it a little scuffing. Nice and clean, aluminum. Maybe yours are all rusty and corroded. All right. Flat side up. And Kroller, if you're watching, might want to redo them instructions because you know people are going to go, well, I just guess that wire goes there. And then pull the coil all the way back in them slots and then just snug it down a little bit. We don't want to twist this off either. And then do the same on the other side, flat side up. This must be for static. It's like a static bleed off wire. It's the only thing I can think of. Okay. Spin the magnet around to it. You might want to clean that with some sandpaper too if it's rusty. Doesn't hurt. Give it a little cleaning. Plus you'll get a little bit more accurate. Spin the magnets over. Line them up. They tell you eight to 12 thousands on the air gap. I'm gonna go with 10. That's kind of in the middle. Okay, the magnet suck it in tight. Now you can tighten it down. They give you a torque spec if you want to get real technical. Spin it till that comes out. One time I had a guy put coils on and he didn't pull these back in the slots. He just tightened them down. And the first time he cranked the motor over, he broke these legs off on the cylinder blocks. And I said, well, stupid, you just ruined that motor. Unless you can find somebody to weld them back on, stupid. All right, air gap set. Now our new kill wire. Alright, that's as far as that goes on. And this one goes on here. And then you hook it. So here's the two wires. The power wire, which has got a bullet connector on it. So we got to cut that off. And crimp this on. So it'll plug into there and then break this off. I don't know what this stupid thing is on there. I didn't mention nothing about cutting that off. Hey, now I gotta cut that off. Come on, Crawler! Now that'll fit in there. Cut this off. White to white. Strippers. Not the kind that take their clothes off. Wire strippers. I know you guys are on strippers. He's got strippers now. <laughs> and then crimper. Stripper and crimper. I got these special flyers. I got a little crimper in there. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Hi, Carol. It's me, Cutter Crimper. All right. Now, you can see this power wire goes in and then comes back out. And that must go to the, this side. And then this other power wire is for this. So when I turn, is for that 
solenoid valve on the carburetor. So I think I can cut these straps off. That's what them are for. We're going to get rid of this whole wiring mess. So let's cut these off. Like I said, read them instructions because it tells you on a different model you have to, they must have this uh, fuel shutoff solenoid is wired into the into the other harness because there's one model they want you to leave the harness on the mower. They just want you to zip tie it to the manifold. But on this one, let's disconnect it and then I'm going to turn the key and listen for that solenoid. Uh oh. Oh, there's somebody here going to spend some money. Let's see who it is. It's Frank. Hey, Frank. What's happening? All right, Frank's gone. And you know what? He didn't spend any money. He just came in to waste my time. Okay, this wire, this power wire is on a separate circuit. Because listen, you'll hear that solenoid click on and off when I turn the key to the first position. Listen now. Listen real careful. Here. So that's on a separate circuit, so we can keep this disconnected. Now there's a ground wire on this harness that's hooked to this manifold bolt. Now in the instructions they tell you to take that bolt out and take that off, but you know what? I ain't gonna do all that. Just cut it. Just a ground wire ain't gonna hurt nothing. Now I don't know what you want to do with this. Throw it away, save it. I don't know. I'm throwing it away. I got enough junk around here. And then take your new zip ties and zip tie these wires back because you don't want them to get caught in the flywheel. And then we got to zip tie our new kill wire down. Then we got to reassemble the whole thing. So what they basically did was went with a 12 volt digital spark advance system and then it didn't work for some reason. And then they just went back to the conventional mommy and daddy ignition. Get them all tidy. Make sure you got them all tucked in there now. Make sure you don't pinch them or put them in a spot where they can get skinned. Alright, now we got this little this guy here so we're going to tuck these wires in here and then bend this down to hold them in place and then maybe one more zip tie they give you three of them or maybe I'll put one more now maybe they give you three in case you mess up because we only cut two off I think it'll be all right. Nothing's going to get in there. All right, I got me extra zip tie and a free sticker. Woohoo! Snip these off. Route your wire, your spark plug lead. See, that, that goes through there. That's what that little lip's for. And then on this side, it's different. It just goes through here for that hole in the cover. All right. Okay. Make sure there's nothing going to fly off. I took that screen off because we're going to test it. We're going to start it before I put the cover back on. Okay. Now I got all this loose and I'm going to hand choke it over here so fired right up sounded good sounded a lot better than it did with that old uh, ignition system on it so if you got one of these motors you might want to get one of these kits now let's put the cover and all that back on. I got to show you how to do that. There's a couple little things you're going to need to know, especially if you're doing this yourself, because you're a do-it-yourselfer. That's why you're on YouTube watching how-to videos. Okay, we're going to put the fan back on. It's notched out for the magnets. 
We'll put that on. Now the cover. Now make sure that this choke link is behind this rod right here. You know, it might have got moved out of the way when you were doing it. So make sure this is back behind here before you put the cover on. And another thing, these gold covered, these gold slates, they go on the inside of the cover, the gold ones, and the black ones go to the outside. So as you're trying to rustle this on, be aware of that. Let me move the oil thing out of the way a little. So the gold goes on the inside. Same with this side. I'm going to move this air filter. See? And then the black part on the outside. So see it dropped right on. Make sure your coil wires aren't pinched. All right. Now that's on. Now you can go ahead and put those Cover screws back in here, here, one on the side here, the four in the front. So why don't you guys go ahead and do that? I'm gonna go get something to drink. All right, screws are all back in the cover and tight. Hook up your voltage regulator. In case you're wondering what that is, voltage regulator. Now I'm gonna put the screw back in. The oil cooler, it's the oil cooler. For people who don't know, they may go, hey, what's that part? What's that part, Carol? Well, I'm telling you. All right, now I'm gonna put this throttle part back on. Remember how I said to have that lever, that rod, choke rod behind that? Now we can put that in place. Now I gotta grab the rod, bring it up through there, put the spring on, the little washer and then now get this goes this way now you might have to hold that rod up because it's going to want to drop down and then put that nut on there that 10 millimeter nut and then tighten that down all right i'll put these fan spacers on with those little washers that go on the bottom. They're cupped washers. So you want the cup part down. You know, you want it curved because it's going to put tension on it. Then get your screen, which has got a little another little spacer under there. Try to guide this all in there without knocking them off. Get them started by hand and then, then zip them down. Put the fuel pump back on and the two screws. Those two screws are plastic screws. They got the coarse threads on them. So you Make sure you put the right hardware back in the right spot. 10 millimeter again. So you only need a few tools to do this. Now let's move this over here. And we're going to put this crankcase breather back on. Put the little rubber grommet back in the valve cover first then you got to get this mess all put on all these little parts they got I don't know why they do it this way plastic screws again with your 5 sixteenths Get it lined up and started. And this is probably the hardest part. 
lining all this crap back up. Look at that. Oh, what a mess this is. I'm gonna try it this way. I hate this thing. Come on. I'm just gonna get them started. Just leave it loose. I'll shove this down in there. That's better. All right, now we can tighten it down. Isn't that much better? I know you're watching that thinking, why didn't you just do it that way? Well, I'm doing it that way. All right, we're almost done. You still filming, boy? All right, let's put this bracket on. Yours may not even have this bracket. You may just have to put these two screws in. All right, now we're gonna hook the cables back up. Get that little Z-bend in there. I'm gonna get this close. Now I got the throttle on Rabbit. And now I'm gonna pull this back so that bolt hits that stop. And then I'm going to tighten it down. See? We need it against that stop for full speed. So, I'm going to back this off a little bit. And then I'm going to redo it again. Pull it till it hits there. Then I'm going to drop the nut driver. And then I'm going to pick it up. All right, now see it sprung back, but now I gave myself a little, a little leeway, so when I push on it, it's hitting. Now, a little tip. This bolt controls your engine speed. So if you turn that in, it's gonna pull that back farther, which is gonna put more tension on the governor speed, and it's gonna raise the engine speed. Now they recommend 3,600 RPM. If you want to take a chance and overspeed your engine because you want more power, that's up to you. If you blow it up, that's on you. I got a digital tachometer where I check the speed. But that's what that screw is for. That's so you can adjust the engine speed. You turn that in, it'll pull that back further and it'll give you more top speed. Just so you know, in case you're asking or wondering. See, you're learning all kinds of stuff other than just putting them coils on. Terrell's teaching you all kinds of stuff. All right, choke cable. Same thing, put it in. You can kind of see on the cable where it was, where it was on there. Now I've got the, throttle set the open, I mean throttle, choke cable set the open, now I'm going to pull it to close, 
All right, I'm getting full choke. You wanna make sure you get full choke. You ain't getting full choke, it may, you may have trouble starting it when it's cold. All right, we got full choke. Now I'm gonna drop this back in here. All right, now if you have this type of air filter, get it on, get it positioned, and go ahead and tighten that up. Oops. There we go. Then the two bolts that went down here, put them back in. And then the cover. And that's it. All done, all back together. So, you got one of these crawlers with that DSAI, Digital Spark Advanced Ignition, and you're having ignition problems, you want to convert it to that kit and get a free sticker and an extra zip tie. There's your dinner. All right, Junior, it should be all fixed. Why don't you go ahead and hit the start button? All right, let's see how this thing works, Pa. Oh, on, Pa, yeah, look at that. Oh, wow, Pa, yeah, looks like it worked great. Yep, looks like it worked better than it did when it was new. You know, son, sometimes things just need a little TLSC. What's that, Pa? Tender loving shotgun care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first fix. Let's get back to work. <laughs> <laughs>